You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. No matter what you're going through, he's got the goods to get you through it and turn your story around. I'm Angela Madden and I'm here with Tom Hollis. We are your hosts for Hope Today. Tom, we have a great program for everyone today. We really do, and I like how you started off. You talked about transformation, and we believe in transformation. I love the verse that said, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. And we're gonna be talking to Tyler Brown in just a moment here, and Tyler has got a story of transformation. You're gonna hear his story. You're gonna hear about how he was transformed a couple of times, how uh, he was led down a road of, of drugs and addiction and then how he found Jesus and how he came out of that and how he was a new creature in Christ, a new creature that's still being renewed day by day. It's one of the, my favorite kind of programs. I love these kind of stories of transformation. So do I, transformation. I mean, that's how we become overcomers that's by the right. word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. And today we're also gonna have a special segment of Throwback Thursday. So we'll have music from a performance back in 2015 from a well-known artist. Today is going to be a packed program, Tom. It, it is. <laughs> and I, I actually, one, one of the things I wanted to do right up top is, uh, for those of you that watch Cornerstone Television regularly, you know that we had a fundraiser last week. We had a goal of $225,000, and we got close. We got to 200000 interesting, 200202 So uh, there's still time to give. If you wanted to help us make up the shortfall on that, uh, I, just please give us a call at, and our prayer partners will be able to be able to pray with you. And I'll be able, also be able to take your donation. We survive here and are able to do this ministry through your prayers and through your giving. And we thank you so much for that. We truly do. And now we're going to take a moment to do something fun. A little game we call Stump the Hosts. Okay, Tom, you ready for this first question? Uh -huh. What did Philip do to the Ethiopian minister? What did he do? What did he well, do? Well, uh, okay, this is one of my favorite sections of scripture, uh, Acts oh, chapter oh. eight, seriously. Uh, he, Philip, um, well, he did a lot of things. He went up and joined his chariot. He talked to him out of Isaiah, explained Isaiah to him, uh, and he baptized him. So I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Good job. He baptized him. That's found in you know Acts 8, 26 through 38. What's great about that is he disappeared, like right as soon as he was done baptizing <laughs> him, like he dunked him in the water, <laughs> came up, and then poof, the Lord took him away. I'm sure the minister was like, hey, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our next one. I hope you're playing along with us. What happened to the kingdom after Solomon died? Ooh. Uh, it divided. It divided. Uh, and remember Jeroboam and Rehoboam, and they they couldn't agree, and uh, ten tribes. It was divided. Hey. Tom, hey, two let's go. <laughs> We're going. We're going good here. It was divided north and south. Okay. Now our next question: Which books in the New Testament were written by brothers of Jesus? Okay, well, there's John. Uh, wait a minute. No, my brothers good. of Jesus. Right. James, James. Right. James. I think it would just be James, wouldn't it? Is there any? I you would think, think I, I would think James. I think I'm, we're just going to go with James. <laughs> oh, oh Jude. Jude and James. The epistles oh. of Jude and James. James. Sneaky little sneaky. producers there that uh, giving us a tough <laughs> question. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. We have, a, we have a fun time with that. We're glad you guys like to play along with us. Well, you know, from burning a cross in the midst of a drug-induced trance to sharing the gospel with everyone he possibly can, our next guest has had his life radically transformed. It was a young age when Tyler Brown was introduced to a drug that nearly destroyed his life. It wasn't until after a specific event in his life that he realized that Jesus was the only one who could set him free. Tyler's story is featured in the new I Am Second film, and he joins us now to share how God, God ultimately turned his life around. Tyler, welcome to Hope Today. Hey, thank you. 
Tyler, let me let me ask you about your early life. What what was it like growing up? Or what what kind of trajectory did your life seem to be on? Yeah, so I I was born in the sunny South, uh, South Carolina, and um, pretty soon into my life, I, I was around two years old. My parents uh, got divorced, and so I started to experience a little bit of the brokenness. Uh, in this world and started to grow up in that. Um, I had three sisters and, um, and it was, um, I guess not an uncommon story. Um, but we, uh, when I was about five years old, uh, my, my dad got remarried and, um, I started doing sports and just really fell in love with baseball and, uh, basketball and football. And, uh, man, I, I loved uh, every time I could go out and, and hit a ball. And, and that became a little bit of a, a joy for me and um, in the midst of, of some of that uh, probably early childhood brokenness. And, and so, yeah, I started playing sports and really excelling and succeeding and um, going on, on some pretty major stages, even at, at a young age, at 11 years old, going into a, a national world series and being number one ranked team in the nation. And, um, but then, uh, as I kind of got a little bit older into middle school, high school years, I'm, uh, I'm a, I'm a relatively shorter guy at five, six, maybe five, seven on my license. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, started feeling like, Oh man, that's not going to be enough to make it to the NBA. Uh, of course, and, unless I'm Bugsy, but you know, a bogue and, have some incredible skills. So started feeling the pressure of that. And even like, man, am I, am I tall enough? Am I good enough? Am I, and some of those feelings started coming out in middle school and, and high school. And, um, so quit basketball, started wrestling and really excelled in wrestling as well. But um, when I was around 16 years old, I got introduced to uh, something that was um, even more of an escape for me, uh, which was marijuana. And pretty soon, after that, uh, crystal meth. And mm. So I started smoking marijuana on a, a daily basis. And then when, when I was um, in a, a pretty uh, unstable uh, place in my life, smoking drugs, I was uh, uh, sexually uh, abused and, um, and introduced to the crystal meth and just went into a real, real dark uh, place in my life for several years. And um, so that's probably some of the early childhood stuff. So as you, you know, here, you know, again, you seem to be doing great as far as athletics and everything. And then, then you know, just a, a simple introduction of marijuana to your life and then followed up with some, with crystal meth and, and more addiction there. So mm -hmm. what, what did that lead to? So you, you just in your teens here, uh, where did that lead you coming out, uh, as you progressed uh, along your teenage years? Yeah, it left me all alone and um, I pushed everybody away. And I was in this one bedroom apartment and uh, working at a gas station and I uh, just didn't have any hope. I uh, uh, found myself one night um, just smoking crack in the bottom of a bathroom floor. And, um, it was just a, a really uh, terrible place to be. And there was a cross on the wall in that apartment when I'd moved in. And, and I was looking at that cross um, and I just took a lighter out of my pocket and started burning the cross. And um, as an expression of, of where my heart was at, it was uh, anti-God, anti-people, um, addicted to drugs and um, really in a, a, a pretty lonely place. So what had your, uh, had you had any spiritual upbringing at all? And, and then what did God do coming out of that situation that, that night with the, taking the lighter to the cross? Yeah, a lot of uh, fear came out of that uh, night. And yeah, I, I'd remembered coming in, you know, in and out of church, um, just growing up in the South, you know, that we have that culture here. So I was aware of some of those uh, teachings about God and, um, but I, man, if there was a God at that point, I knew I wasn't in a good place with him. Mm -hmm. And so that led me to a church. And, um, while I was at, at church, I met, um, Ellie and she's my wife now by God's grace. And, 
And she really uh, walked with me um, and helped introduce me to Jesus. So how long did it take? I know you had an experience with God, and I want you to share that. Did that come the first time you walked into church? Did it, did Ellie, how, how, did, how did you actually come to faith in Christ? Yeah, I think I was trying really hard in my own strength. Like, man, let me clean myself up. Let me get better. Uh, let me try to stop doing these drugs and stuff. And uh, I'll go to church, and this is a new, fresh start for me. Uh, but I found I didn't have enough strength um, to, I was, uh, powerless over my drug addiction. And, um, it had uh, slowly crept back up into my life, even in the midst of going to church. And um, and so I would kind of clean myself up on the outside and go to church on Sunday, but then I would fall back into the uh, drug addiction back uh, at home and on the weekends. And, and so I was in this place, and I guess it was desperation. Um, God, will you uh, please just set me free from this. God, I, I, I can't do this in my own strength. And, and um, man, he, he heard my prayer and had mercy on me. And, and he touched me with his love um, one day. And, and uh, he's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. And I don't have to be alone anymore in a, in a dark place. But uh, he introduced me to, to light and to love and um, that was power enough to set me free from the drug addiction. And so um, I haven't smoked uh, marijuana or crystal meth for uh, 12 years now uh, since that moment. And he's walking with me. God is every step of the way. Well, I, I love that. And uh, did, it, did, it feel, did it feel like something happened? I mean, did you actually feel something or was it just sort of a step of faith? Uh, yes, I felt something. <laughs> uh, it felt really, uh, yeah, um, good. Praise God. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I've, I've heard it from both, both ways uh, of, of from people. Yeah. Sometimes they just take that step and they don't feel any feelings at all, but God transforms them just the same, you know, so uh, yes, it, yes. It's, it, it's good. But let me ask you. Uh, well, I think, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was just reminded of that uh, story in the Bible where Jesus touches this woman and she went everywhere. She went to doctors. She went probably she went to whatever counseling. She went to everything. But um, she came to Jesus. And when Jesus touched her, he felt power go from him um, into her. And I, I believe I had a moment where the power of Jesus uh, touched me and, uh, and saved me. Yeah, fantastic. You kind of had a real whirlwind of the next uh, uh, several months there, didn't you? I mean, from, you know, burning a cross to what happened over like the next six months. Oh, man. I was, <clears throat> uh, within a year later after burning the cross, I was at a seminary uh, studying to preach the Bible. <laughs> that, was, that was a pretty quick turnaround uh, for sure. Um, I had, I guess that would have been January 2012, God had uh, rescued me. In February, I had proposed to, to Ellie, and uh, she said yes. And then in March, I had a real strong sense of my life from God to, to, to preach this gospel um, for the rest of my life. And how, how could I not, you know, after such a, a transformative moment? And so I went to seminary to start studying the Bible, and I, I guess we'd we got married in May and then moved around July to uh, start our lives together on this new path of uh, going into the ministry. So. Well, and, and everything's been perfect since then, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to say so. Uh, well, is, I mean, isn't that, uh, that's sometimes the way we feel that, uh, that, well, uh, you know, we've had that great experience. But God is continuing to walk us all through things. So why don't you tell me, how, how has God uh, progressed in your life uh, since then? Yeah, thank you for that question. And um, it's true, you know, I, I had a pretty significant moment of healing and a pretty big splash of joy in my life, like a new little kid in this new relationship with a father in, in heaven and starting to learn about who Jesus is. And, um, but I, I, I think pretty soon into my walk with Jesus, some of those old uh, kind of ways of relating to people um, kind of started cre creeping back in. Like, man, I, I've got to please my father. Uh, or I've got to 
uh, work really hard to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm okay. And, um, so some of these places that, uh, started to give me a little bit of anxiety, like, what if I'm, what if I'm not enough, you know? And, and, and as a missionary, I, I uh, ended up moving out to, um, to Utah. And, and while I was there, I, um, there was a moment where I remember being triggered pretty significantly with some, uh, pretty serious anxiety. And so, um, and that, that did now has led me to, to therapy and counseling to, to help work through some of those pretty traumatic moments of my past. And, and so, yeah, I'd say Jesus absolutely brought healing and a new life and a new relationship with God. Uh, but the church now has come around me and is praying for me and helping me learn how to relate to him um, in, in grace and uh, with freedom and, and also um, uh, some of these other pieces like counseling. It's been really helpful for me to work through some of those uh, tragic moments uh, from my past. Well, Tyler, I know you have a heart for people and, uh, you know, you're in ministry and you want to see people transformed. To someone who's watching right now and maybe identifying with your story, maybe, maybe a, a completely different story, what would you say to them if they're a Christian and maybe they they've, uh, feel like uh, their, their walk with God has grown cold or maybe there's some things they just can't get past? How would you encourage them? Yeah, don't give up. Uh, don't give up. Uh, maybe even give in. Give in to the Father's love. Uh, surrender. Um, and, and surrender is a really good word. Um, you'll find uh, that it may be risky uh, to surrender, but when you do, you'll be met with the most uh, unbelievable love from a God who will never leave you. And he'll walk with you even through uh, some of those hard moments. He's walking with you even right now. Well, thank you so much, Tyler. I appreciate that. I appreciate you sharing your story. And I would encourage anybody to uh, go to the I Am Second site. And you can see Tyler Brown's story there. Tyler, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. Well, I, I just uh, appreciate that so much. We're going to have some ministry in that area when we come back. We're also going to have a throwback Thursday. So we'll be right back. Are you tired of just getting bills in your mailbox? Find inspiration instead by subscribing to the Cornerstone Television's Hope Today newsletter. Each month we'll deliver good news about what God is doing in our region and world through CTVN's ministry. We'll keep you in the know about our latest special programming and our full program guide will keep you connected to all your favorites. You'll also find a new Dashing Dish recipe every month. As you read our Hope Today newsletter, stay encouraged knowing your generosity and giving to CTVN is making a difference and building God's kingdom. We can't do it without you. Sign up today to receive your inspirational free Hope Today newsletter every month in your mailbox. Go to our website at ctvn.org news or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for being a part of our Cornerstone Television family. Hope happens here. You know, I loved our interview with Tyler today, and I think all of us can resonate with pieces and parts of it. You know, we are all on this journey, and our healing comes in parts. So today, I want to just encourage you, stay encouraged. Don't give up. Keep pursuing the Father's heart, and you too will find freedom and transformation like Tyler. You know, I think, Tom, a lot of times, especially within our Christian circles, we think we have this altar moment mm -hmm. where we're suddenly healed and transformed yeah. and that we shouldn't have any more healing necessary. Yeah. But that's just not how it works. That is not <laughs> how it works. You know, I, 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 had a, when I got saved when I was like 12 years old. So there wasn't like this whole like history of things I had done. You know, I was pretty young. But I, I had sinned too. You know, obviously we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and I felt a transformative power, Angela. Mm. I felt like something had been lifted off yes. of me. I can remember praying at the altar in my Nazarene church and, and something was lifted off mm. of me. I know that I was saved at that moment, yes. but that wasn't the end of the story. God began to do things in my life and sometimes it takes years. Sometimes we have to get like Tyler to the place where we say, hey, wait a minute, there's hurts in my past yeah. that uh, I need to deal with. And you say, well, why didn't God just like heal that all up? Well, that's <laughs> not how it works. 
Things got deposited into us, the world, the flesh, and the devil. People deposited wrong things in us or put things on us. That God, he, you know, it would, it would kind of kill us if he took it all off at once. He, he takes it off, Angela, just a little bit at a time. He kind of peels away the onion, sort of, yes. to get to our real self. That's what Tyler is going through right now. That's what you may be going through. That's okay. It's all right not to be all right. <laughs> we're, we're in a process of growing and becoming and learning, finding out who God is. And you're like, oh, I'm saved. I know who God is. Man, there's a lot more. There's a lot more beyond that initial salvation experience. Praise God for that. But when a baby is born, it only knows a little bit of its mother and okay. knows just a, a, a little bit. And as, as that baby grows, he begins to know more and more of his mother, his father, his family, and what that all means. That's right. You know, I always say that if God reveals it, he intends to heal it. You know, and, and don't be afraid of the things that he reveals to you. Even Tyler used language as triggers. So he had moments that it really triggered him. You know, I believe Holy Spirit showed me a year ago or so that these triggers are actually invitations into transformation. So if you find yourself triggered in a moment, it's actually a beautiful invitation. It is the Father saying, hey, hold on. There's a space inside of you that needs healing from that fear. There's a space inside of you that needs healing from that abuse or misuse. And I want to do it. If we didn't have these triggers, Tom, we would have no idea that there was still hurt and pain inside of our heart that needed mended. So welcome the healing. Healing is the place that you get to know God more. Healing is the place that you get to arise and shine even more. Yeah, it might be painful. Yeah, it might be difficult to go through the process, but I assure you he is with you in the process, just like he sat with that woman caught in the issue of sin. He sat with her when she was accused. Just like that, he will sit with you, he will mend you, and he will bind up every broken part of your heart. You know, I, I just feel like there's somebody out there that you're, you feel like you're trapped. I gotta get this, like mm. there's like a case around you or something. And for some reason, I have the, the 30 years. I feel like it's been a long time mm -hmm. that you've been trapped in something mm -hmm. and that God is, is wanting today to pierce that thing and to pull that away and to set you free. And so I'm just gonna take a moment to pray for you. However it is, a man, or for some reason, I see a woman as, I, as I'm saying this, but whoever you are, God wants to set that, that thing Oh, uh, take that thing off of you, set you free. These are moments, as Angela said, moments, invitations to be healed. So right now, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that for our brother, for our sister out there who has for many years been trapped and, and, and encased in something that is not of your making, not of her making, but of the world, the flesh, and the devil, those things that are, have, have uh, trapped that person, I pray you would pierce that now and set her free set him free into a new life. Yes, they're saved, Lord, but now a, a new step in that new life. Amen. Amen. God wants you to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He wants you to be in his marvelous light, to experience the goodness that he has. And so today, if you're not experiencing that, Take one step closer to the Father so that you can welcome more of it into your life. We're going to close today's program with a Throwback Thursday music performance from 2015 of Jason Gray performing Good To Be Alive. And our hope is that as you listen to this song, you too will realize today's a good day to be alive. I don't feel like I deserve it Every day I wake Every breath I take You've given So right here Right now While the sun is shining down I want to live Like there's no Life that 
made beautiful in the living and the joy I get brings joy to the heart of the giver then right here right now this is the song I'm singing out oh, I want to live like there's no tomorrow's hope today teaching others about the good news of jesus christ pastor and worship leader steel crosswhite offers practical advice on how you can share the gospel with non-believing family members and friends that's tomorrow on hope today Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.